Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Today we're going to be opening up the RadioMaster TX-16S to do a couple little mods to it. First we're going to be installing the second speaker upgrade. Now if you've got a newer TX-16S that is shipped recently, apparently they're all coming with the two speakers already installed. But if you've got an earlier version like I do and you're not overly impressed with the sound volume, uh, you can get a second speaker to put in it. And I'm going to be showing you what's involved in that. It's pretty simple. I actually had to build this one because they didn't have the uh, available Radio Master speakers yet with the harnesses already soldered on, but now they do. I will link to it below in the description. Um, if you did want to build your own, not that I'd recommend it because you can get the Radio Master one for so cheap, but these are just a 40 millimeter speaker and very important you get the right values, 8 ohms, 2 watts and it is hooked in parallel with the internal speaker that's already in there. Uh, there's basically a female Pico plug and a male. The male plugs into the circuit board where that speaker was plugged into, and then that speaker plugs into the female here. So they're wired in parallel. Assuming this one's 8 ohms, this one's 8 ohms, uh, we'd have a 4 ohm impedance system afterward. And as you saw in the review I did on that, I'll link to it below in the description if you didn't see the review I did on the Radio Master. But one of my biggest complaints was the sound volume. Let's just listen to it here. Jet turbine ignition on. Jet turbine ignition off. That's full volume. I've got it on my S2 dial maxed right out and just comparing it to my Horus. Jet turbine ignition on. Jet turbine ignition off. Just no comparison. Do I think this is going to sound as good as that after putting this in? Highly doubt it, but any increase in volume is going to be an improvement. Now, the second uh, little mod we're going to be doing while we've got it open, people have asked me how hard is it to switch your toggles around in the back. Uh, as you may have seen from a few videos I've done on heli reviews, I've got my throttle hold on the right side and my sprung on the left. I've been flying for years with my throttle hold to position on the right side of the radio. I'm not about to relearn it. So if you're in the same boat, you like this radio, but that muscle memory over years or decades of flying has left you wanting for a two position on the right. I'm going to show you what's involved. Is it hard? Mm, not really, but there's a lot. Of, you got to take the gimbals out. You got to pull the circuit boards out. You got to desolder the switches. So as long as you're comfortable with all that, it's not hard at all. But if you're not, yeah, probably best just leaving it alone. But you'll see what's involved when we have it apart. Let's get inside. So to open these up, it's not too difficult. Uh, it might help if you leave it out in the sun for a while just to soften the side grips here. They just kind of peel off. There's just little dimples that hold it in and these little catches on the side. If they're soft though from some heat from the sun, it makes it just a little bit easier. And then we've got four Phillips screws on the back and two 2.5 millimeter hexes on the top. So we'll do these ones first. I'm just gonna fast forward through all these. You'll notice I've got this uh, T-Rex assembly towel down. Anything that's soft just prevents you from scratching anything on the front. Forgot to take the battery out. We should have started with that. So I'll take the battery out and get these screws out. So they're all the same length, the four Phillips and those two little hexes on the top for the antenna surround. They're a little bit shorter and fatter. Now that we've got that out, this just should come out. There we go. And there's the opening for the speaker. So let's install that right now. So the speaker kit that you get, uh, it'll come with the speaker. The wiring harnesses will already be on. It's showing a little piece of foam. I just cut this out of some foam I had. I don't know if it's the right size, but it looks like it from the photo. And then just four or three little screws that hold the speaker in. And there's a little notch on the side. So these just fit in like so. Actually, we we're supposed to put the foam in first, I guess. 
Again, if you get the Radio Master one, it's probably going to have some instructions to show you the proper way to install it. Fast forward. So, there we go. And here is the plug for the internal speaker. So, it's the last plug on the circuit board here. So, I'm just going to zoom in. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better. And we're just going to plug this into the female. Like so. And then this new plug looks like I made mine a little too short. There we go. Now I would actually like to listen to this. Yeah, I'm just going to put the back on here real quick. I'm not going to screw it all back together yet, of course, but I just want to see what this sounds like. We'll plug the battery pack back in and turn her on. Mm, you turn me on. Normal mode, throttle, low rates, rudder low, jet turbine, ignition off. Jet turbine, ignition on. Jet turbine, ignition off. Jet turbine, ignition on. Jet turbine, ignition off. Definitely louder, but not the same rich volume that the Horus has, but better, definitely better. Jet turbine, ignition off. So if you get the actual Radio Master upgrade, I'm sure it would sound just as good, if not better. So now we'll get to the switches. We'll pull this out. Now you have to remember from now on, if you've ever had this apart before, you know you could just pull the back right off, but we can't do that as easy now because we've got that uh, wiring harness here from the little speaker. Okay. I just gotta get out some tools and we'll be back. Right, now the fun begins. So remember, mine is reversed already. So my two position is over here, my spring is over here. Yours, of course, will be opposite of that. Now I'm not gonna do both, I'm just gonna show you what's involved in taking out one, but they're both the same, and hopefully you'll get the idea. So the first thing I wanna do is mark the top of the switch, so when I solder it back on the board, I've got it oriented correctly, and I don't have it 180 degrees in the wrong direction. This is the spring sprung one, so I'm just going to put S on here, and this is the two position. So, of course, on yours, the two would be here, the S would be here, but when you install them, make sure the S and the two are facing up so you know they're soldered in the board correctly. Now, to get these out, I'm just going to do this side. You have to take these little washers, the retaining washers off the switches, there's an actual special tool. I just use a flat bladed screwdriver, put it in the notch and turn it just to loosen them off. And then you can unscrew these. And that's what holds the switch assembly. Both these switches are on one circuit board here. We have to take out the little side slider. So there's two Phillips screws on it. Tweezers might help. Where'd that other screw go? Oh, he's down there. Okay, and you still can't get these out because this gimbal's in the way, and that's the big pain. So to get the gimbal out, four Phillips screws on each corner. Okay, all those screws are out. should mention all the screws are the same length that hold this little switch in, the rotary switch in, and the gimbal. And then we can just pull the gimbal up. And now this can come out. And there's that screw from the rotary switch. So, if you want, you could take the zip tie off and unplug 
this switch array here. I'm just going to leave it in place. Actually, no, I am going to take it out. Just be easier to film that way so you can see what's going on. So we'll just chop the zip tie. If you wanted to, you could mark on the wires just so you know where the zip tie goes back on when you put a new one on. And then this connector will come out. So there's the switch assembly. So you may be thinking you could just swap the switch assemblies, but you can't because the lower one is staggered to the outside. So obviously here it wouldn't fit. So that's why you have to unsolder both the upper switches. So again, I'm just doing this one side, but you would have to do the same thing on both to get these both out. So now we will uh, unsolder number two. You could either use solder wick, but I have a uh, solder vacuum tool and we'll get that uh, out right now. So again, use whatever desoldering method works best for you. Solder wick, I have one of these desoldering tools. Actually, I did a review on it a while back. I'll fire a link up in the card doodad and below the description if you wanted to take a peek, if you're at all curious about these things. They work really slick, actually. Once you use them, uh, it's hard to go back to solder work wick. And there's just three pins to desolder. Okay, now that those are out, we've got to get the switch out. Because it's a through, plated through hole, these can sometimes be a bugger. But with that solder, desolder tool, it's not too bad. So, that's what you would have to do to both boards. And then swap them around. And then just solder them back in. Trying to get in frame here. Too much going on, I'm rushing. But you'll get the idea. Can't even see what I'm doing to tell you the truth here. Now, I'll clean those up when the camera's not in the way. But yeah, you just solder the switch back on the board. And now we have to put this back in the radio and put it all back together. Pretty much the reverse order. Yeah, I forgot to mention, when you do solder that back in, make sure you've got the 2 or the S on the top. Or the switch will work backwards from what you want it to. Uh, so we've got to plug this little guy back in. Slide it back in. Get our gimbal back in. And I'm just going to fire the screws in here real quick. We'll fast forward through all that. And we'll get the rotary switch in here. All these screws, they're just being threaded into plastic, so don't over torque them or you'll just strip them out. And then we've got to put the washers back on our switch array here. And then we just have to uh, re-zip tie that. Make sure everything looks right. Just make sure those are back in. Switches work. Rotary switch works. Okay, just got to fire the back back on. So we will, oops, I plugged my little speaker back in there. So we will plug the first speaker into the harness of the second. Plug the second into the board here. And 
just make sure all the wires are okay. Nothing's getting pinched. Oh, one thing I should mention. So it has nothing to do with the mods, but uh, you may notice on this side where the friction bands are, I just put a little bit of Kapton tape on this one band just to protect the edge of this wiring. Because as you're moving this gimbal, this is my throttle and collective, that wire uh, is just grazing the outside of that band. It's probably not needed, but I thought it was just a little bit of extra protection. And you'll notice on this side I took the bands right off. So, put those back on. Actually, we should just double check, make sure none of that wire is getting pinched. Nope. And we've got to get our antenna back on here. Just make sure everything's lined up. Yep, that's all good. And we'll just put our four screws back in. And then the two hexes on top. But let's just see how it all functions. Mm, you turn me on. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Normal mode. Throttle release. Low rates. Rudder low. Jet turbine. Ignition off. Throttle hold. Throttle release. So we're all good to go. Just put those screws back in. And then uh, these just fit back on again. If you put them out in the sun to warm them up so they're a little bit softer, might have a little bit of an easier time uh, plugging them back into those holes on the side and the little clips. So that's what's involved in putting a speaker in and swapping your switches around. Hopefully that uh, answers any questions for anyone who's thinking of doing this. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time and happy flights.